Okay guys, I've been diving pretty deep here lately into uh, Ink Stitch. It's a plugin for Inkscape that lets you create embroidery patterns for embroidery machine using Inkscape. Inkscape. It is a free plugin and Inkscape is free. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that in this video. Go to inkstitch.org and you can get the uh, plug-in ink stitch plug-in works Linux Mac and Windows and it's free can't beat that you do need Inkscape version 0.92.2 or higher last I knew Ubuntu 20.04 does not meet this requirement it may be different now tried to install it on my wife's Kubuntu machine it was on uh, 20.04 and it didn't it didn't have this version requirement met I tried snap I did not have a good experience with the snap install the plugin would not properly install and I probably could have forced it but I've been wanting to move her system over to Manjaro anyway and that has happened so her machine and my machine are both on Manjaro and both of them have the flat pack flat hub version of Inkscape installed and it works like a charm once you download it you're going to come into Inkscape go uh, edit preferences system user extension this is where you want that plugin to live and when I first did this that would open I'm not sure why it doesn't now but that gives me a good reason to tell you how to get there it's your home and then you can type dot var there we go dot var now you're just gonna click app Inkscape config uh, where was it Inkscape config Inkscape so Inkscape extensions right there it is and it does not work if you create a folder for Inkscape and then put the plugin unzipped into that folder it does not work you have to put the unzipped files straight into extensions once you have done that you're going to come into extensions your ink stitch should be right here and you're going to click install add-ons for Inkscape once you have completed that it gives you this menu where you can select your embroidery machine we have a brother and that gives you the brother color palette along the bottom super simple super handy so these are a series of images that I've actually made on Inkscape Ink Stitch and have embroidered. I made this and in this video I'm going to show you how I did this one. It's actually super simple. Uh, this one is one that my wife wanted made. She actually designed it on a sheet of paper and I made it happen for her. This is a customer that sells at the local farmers market Owl Ridge Farm wanted an owl and I made this happen this is something that I did as a project just mostly a learning project I do have several shirts that have this Linux on there as well as the first one Monjera Linux I have some shirts with that on it I'm kind of turning it into a walking billboard for Linux uh, this is also a customer who sells things on Etsy under the name Sweet Olivia May and I made her embroidery happen and this was just something I was just playing around with wondering how much freehand I could make work and I come up with this not very good but it only took me 10 minutes probably and I made this specifically as a applique so it does a stitch a straight stitch along the line of the tree 
you put a piece of fabric down it does another straight stitch to lock the fabric down you cut the excess fabric away and then it does a satin stitch around the edge to make it neat I didn't do the applique I just sewed it out in this example so there's a couple of examples so the first thing that I highly recommend that you do is to set up a default document properties when we got our brother we got four three different cages one's a five by seven one's a four by four and one's a something else smaller three by three I think so a default to a five by seven and you can change it to portrait or you can change it to landscape that's easy if it's a four by four then it doesn't matter if I do a shirt pocket I always do it in a four by four and if you want a certain size to be the default that happens every time you open Inkscape, Inkscape set your document property that you want it to be and then go into save template name it check this box to set as default template and once you save it that's what it will load up every time you start Inkscape this is really important because if you don't know the size if you don't know the size of the document that you're creating or if you do know it and it's just way too big once you get troubleshooting done and it works and then you realize that you need to shrink it to make it fit a 5 by 7 or a 4 by 4 you're introducing new problems you will probably have to troubleshoot it all over again because of that size change so make sure that you're working to start with the size that you need it to be and I'm gonna set it back just real quick I'm gonna set it back to a 5x7 I'm gonna show you just a real real simple little creation show you how easy it is I'm gonna come in here with a free freehand pencil and I'm gonna make that is a tree trunk does it look like a tree trunk well it might look a little bit more like a tree trunk shortly go to fill and stroke on fill I'm going to change it to kind of a brown color and let's go into here okay give me a brown color something somewhat brown okay that'll work there's my brown tree trunk and go back to my pointer I'm immediately gonna come up here oh wait I want to take a stroke off I don't want the outline I'll show you why I don't want to outline shortly but I don't want to outline Inkscape I'm gonna go ahead and troubleshoot and troubleshoot objects and I do have an error error border crosses itself awesome so I get to show you how to fix this already zoom way in and go to objects on this side troubleshoot I'm gonna delete that so what it is 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 you can't cross over like that I'm gonna come up here grab this tool and pull that around so now it's no longer crossing itself now it'll work I'm going to zoom back out go into extensions ink stitch troubleshoot troubleshoot objects all shapes are valid awesome I troubleshoot a lot because okay got that fixed I had to go into view I had to go into edit and there was an undo skew so I had changed the skew so I have fixed that so now it should tell me that it's good troubleshoot objects all shapes are valid awesome Our tree trunk is done so now I'm going to go in here go back to freehand and I'm just going to draw the classic treetop shape come to fill and stroke 
Take stroke off, go fill, and we're going to fill it with green. Outstanding. Extensions, ink stitch, troubleshoot, troubleshoot objects. All shapes are valid. Sweet. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make a sun. That looks like a sun, doesn't it? How about now? Give me a yellow, bright yellow. Awesome. Bright yellow. There's our sun. We're going to do a little bit more with that sun. We're going to create a, a little bit of star flare. Now it looks a little more like a sun, doesn't it? And then we're going to select that. We're going to select all of this so that both of those things, those, both of those objects are selected. And we're going to go to path and we're going to select union. Now they are one thing. Extensions, ink stitch, troubleshoot, objects, valid. Sweet. So just like that, I have created a scene. We're going to simulate. Depending on the size of your document and how much you have going on, the simulator does take it a little bit of time to happen. So that's why I opt to do the troubleshooting. So I can come into this and know that it's most likely going to work. I'm going to speed that up a little bit. There's our trunk. There's our tree. And now it's making the sun. Awesome. So just like that I made a nice little design. Alright, we're going to start over. Select everything, hit delete. It's all gone. I'm going to go File, Document Properties. Go 4x4. Four four. Now we have a 4x4 four four for a shirt pocket. We're going to... Now we're going to import the Monjero logo. Hit open. Now anytime that you import a picture and we need to obviously need to size that down. Click this little button right here, right here, to lock the dimensions in so that you don't make it look funny when you shrink it. Pull that over, shrink it a little more. Push control button and the wheel to scroll in. Push the wheel button and you can move around. I like that size. I think that's good. But it will not embroider this because it ink stitch doesn't know what this is. And I'll show you with the troubleshoot object. Object. Object type ink stitch only knows how to work with paths and ignores everything else. So you have to have everything has to be a path. Go back to objects, grab that troubleshoot layer and delete. So we have to turn this into a path. The easiest way to do that is to trace bitmap. Uh, I usually use brightness cutoff. Hit update. Yes, it's black, but that's an easy fix. Click on the image. Delete the original image. Now we have that. Remember, this bottom color palette is set for my embroidery machine when you install yours it will be yours so that's pretty close representation to the color that Manjaro is but there's more to do because now that it's path if you troubleshoot now it's going to tell you There's small fill. It's also going to tell you that the shape prevents it, and it's telling you right here use the break apart fill objects. It's telling you what to do on that one. Go back to my troubleshoot layer and delete and highlight that object. Extensions, ink stitch, fill tools, break apart objects. You also have path, break apart. And the difference is path break apart and ink stitch break apart. As you have on this, you have simple and complex. I think simple is the same as path break apart. I like complex because it usually works better. 
your mileage may vary. Hit close. Now I have three paths, one path each for the objects in the image. Now it should be fine. It should tell us we're good and we're good. So the way that I did the original, in the original that I told you I was going to show you how to do, this right here, I did. I used the ink stitch lettering, which when you use the ink stitch lettering, it pretty much just works. And I'll show you that now, extensions ink stitch lettering, simple. And once you start typing, it will show a preview over here. Type in Monjero. This is kind of limited. It doesn't have very many fonts. It has only these fonts here. So it's a lim little bit limited on what you can do with it. You can use the regular text fonts that are in Inkscape, but if you do that, you do have to turn that into a path, and I will show you that in a future video. So the one that I used in the to demonstrate is TT Masters. It's a all caps, but it is a a silk stitch, so it turns out really nice just by default. Hit apply and quit. It does take it a few seconds for it to apply to your your work. You can move it around. You can resize it. I want it to fit on this four by four. I'm gonna make sure that's locked. And I'm going to size this down. So we have our Monjero. We're going to go back to extensions, ink stitch, lettering. I want it to be on the same TT Masters. We're going to type Linux. Hit apply and quit. I'm going to drag that down and see how it's bouncing around it's annoying as far as I'm concerned that is if you have this over here on the side that is that button right there now I can move it around where I want it I'm gonna size it down just a little bit and I'm gonna center it under Monjero even though I didn't do that in the original All right since we used the built-in ink stitch lettering I'm not going to troubleshoot because it should just work let's see what happens we'll speed this up so we can get through this a little quicker and it works beautiful uh, quick note Ink stitch works from bottom up. So if you noticed in that preview, it did this line first on Monjero. That's the bottom one. And then it's going to do this one next. And then it's going to do that one next. And then it does Monjero. And then in the last one is on top. It does Linux. We keep in mind that it works from bottom up. And I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to show you real quick. why that's important. I'm going to do a couple of colors here. So if we troubleshoot this, it should tell me that everything's good to go. All shapes are valid. Okay, so on each one of these, I'm going to just highlight them all. And fill and stroke, I am going to give them a stroke. Uh, we'll make it stroke smaller. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Now, you would want it to do green on your embroidery machine. You'd want it to do all the green. And then you'd want it to do all the black. Because otherwise you're going to be changing from green to thread to black. Green thread to black. Green thread to black. And I'm going to show you in the objects. This path is for both colors. We're going to do a troubleshoot real quick. It should be okay. Yep. Now we'll do a simulator. 
simulator and on this simulator line you're gonna see green black green black green black green black that's gonna be a major pain in the tail when you're actually embroidering it because you don't want to switch threads that often but it's gonna do green black green black green black and a way to fix this I'm gonna highlight all these again on the fill in stroke I'm gonna turn stroke off Oop, I didn't mean to do that so I'm gonna highlight these again I'm gonna push control D what that does is duplicates it so now I have a top layer and on the top layer I'm gonna turn fill off I'm gonna turn stroke on it looks exactly the same but in your objects layer you'll notice that your greens are your uh, down here and your black highlights are next so now we're gonna we're gonna troubleshoot real quick just to make sure everything's valid and on extensions we'll go visualize and simulator now when we simulate we're gonna have all green and then we're gonna do the black that's how you want it to come out when you're actually stitching this awesome do the green change thread right here and then it's gonna do the black highlights we'll speed this up I really like watching this it's kind of nice and calming and it's gonna do the black outline so keep that in mind when you're making your designs you don't want it especially if you're selling the designs you don't want it to be a pain in the tail on people to use otherwise they're not going to use your product so I'm going to end this little tutorial right here and I'll pick up later on I'll, I'll be doing a series I'll be doing several of these thank you for watching